we have the deck profile of Thomas Rose. He just won the Chesterfield Regional with this deck, as well as topping the Sheffield Regional. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's Burning Abyss as ever, uh, and we'll just get into the profile. I played 10 Burning Abyss monsters, same 10 that I've been playing for a while now, with two Farfas and two Skarms, and then six others. Seer and Graf and Libic being really strong, and then the other three just kind of having some neat tech effects that come up occasionally. Uh, I also played same three Rhino Warriors and a Tour Guide. These are great to open with. Um, just extra copies of Graf to help you get that combo, two card combo started. And one Edgimp Sabres works really nicely with Libic and great to send off Mathematician, played two of. Um, so you can send the sabers with your Mathematician, uh, put something back on top of your deck that you want to mill for the sabers, and then mill the three and you'll hit the card that you just put back. So it gets you another way that you can set up uh, with this is like opening a Rhino Warrior and a Burning Abyss Monster, but the Mathematician is a more versatile effect and gives you other options on sending things like Fairy Tale Snow, uh, which, as we all know, is absolute linchpin of the deck, and you always want to be able to find this. Uh, for some of my extenders, I've been really happy playing with the little Chaos Dragons. So Wyvern Buster is obviously the one that you most want to open with. Um, Collapse Serpent. You could only play one. Uh, I think I'd still want to play three Wyvern Bursters just because I always want to see this in my opening hand. Uh, the risk then is that the combo, if you start with a Rhino and a Burning Abyss monster, you need to uh, go through your mills with the Dante, and you still want to mill three just to get as many cards in Grave as possible. Uh, and if at that point you were to mill your Collapse Serpent, you'd completely ruin all of your link plays for the rest of the turn. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get any search with the Wyvern Burster, so I've just found that it's much safer to play the second copy of the Collapsed Serpent uh, and guarantee that if you start with this, you'll be able to get through your two link materials and still have the Wyvern Burster for next turn, ideally with another Collapsed Serpent in deck so that you can just keep that advantage train going. Uh, more extenders. I played two Gallus. Same as I've been playing for a while now, uh, but slightly different. I played three Sushinoko, three Jackalope, and two Nessies. Uh, I've been finding that the hands where you open with the Danger Monsters have just been so strong, uh, and with these ones being level three as well, I really just want to draw them as, as much as I can. So up to the full three copies. Nessie, slightly less strong and definitely much weaker in multiples, so I thought play a little bit more conservatively in that regard, stick with the same two that I've been playing for a while, but try maxing out on the others. Uh, next up we have Eclipse Wyvern. Uh, this is a card that I had on my list for Milan. I, I really liked it uh, as a way of searching Dark Arm Dragon, but I realised after the event that I definitely wasn't maxing out on the value that I could have from Eclipse Wyvern, because whilst I was playing Distrudo, I hadn't gone with the Mermer, and it became apparent that whilst it can be a brick, it's just so strong when it resolves, and combined with the fact that I've chosen to incorporate the Edge Imp Sabres in my build, it's not so much of a problem if I do draw it, because I can always put it back on the top of my deck. Um, and it means that if you get to a later turn in the game, and you start your turn with these two in your graveyard, even if this was your draw for turn, you can just put it back, summon this from grave, get the Distrudo, and go for Yazi from there, summoning the Mermare straight from the top of your deck. Uh, being able to go for that into a Link 4 play is really, really strong for what in that situation would just be a single card investment. So I think I was making a mistake not including it sooner, but it worked out for me in the end. Uh, despite having quite a lot of three ofs in the deck, I still played Hydrolander. Uh, I guess I kind of had to change my mentality on it a little bit, in that I now accept that I assume that this won't resolve 
unless I'm activating it when I already have a snow engrave to push it through. So it's not something that you can try and get lucky on in the same way that if you're playing mostly one and two ofs, you could just try it and it will probably go off okay. Uh, this, this build of the deck really relies on having snow to guarantee that you'll still have the right grave set up to resolve that effect. And then finally, three seconds light. There's a lot of stuff in the main deck. Uh, it ended up being 45 cards without any kaijus, hand traps, any of that. It's just a big old stack of extenders because it's a lot of fun to play a deck like that. Um, and yeah, it was really enjoyable. Uh, I, I continued to play it because I find it really fun. But yeah, we'll get onto the extra deck. Uh, field center, token, and we have Borrow Sword, Borrow Load. These are two options really for what you want to end on if you go through the uh, Yazi and Mare Mare combo. I have the Topologic, uh, a really nice interaction for um, any monster reliant deck. So typically, if it's like if you go first against uh, the Warrior decks, you can set up on this and keep summoning your snow underneath it as just like a Raigeki for every seven cards in your graveyard. Uh, we have Trisbana for back row decks, Summon Sorceress and Curious to give you some nice combos on turn one. Uh, Unicorn and Phoenix as removal tools. Underclock Taker for pushing some damage um, and also being a Dark Link 2 can often come up very handy when you need to make Curious. Uh, Reprodocus, generally just there to allow you to summon Summon the Sorceress. Uh, Link Aribo to go with your Yazi for the Link 4 plays, and then two Dantes and one Beatrice. There's clearly no space for a Pilgrim in this extra deck. I'm cramming in all of the fun options, but it means that I lose out on some of the, the more conservative plays. I had to cut the Cerberus as well, so it's super tight trying to fit in everything that I thought would be really fun to play. Um, it did come back to hurt me a little bit. There were times when Beatrice got destroyed and I was like, yep, I guess I can either summon a Dante or not if I've already used them both. So that was unfortunate. I definitely had one occasion where my Beatrice got destroyed and I was like, yeah, I can't use the effect. Um, but all in all, having so many cool cards just to summon was a lot of fun, so I was quite happy with that. Uh, on to the side deck. Uh, oh yeah, we also have some really cool Team Caribros tokens for my uh, Mermer to summon. If, you're, uh, if you catch me at an event and you'd like one of these, just shout out and I'll probably have some with me. I got loads. Um, I sided four different kaijus. Um, different names because I am still playing the Hydrolanders. Um, these are really important to have for Sky Striker. Uh, they come in against other things as well, but it's it's Striker that it matters most. The deck really struggles to deal with Eagle Booster, so having a card that you can draw where the booster just doesn't matter, you lock down their back row and then wipe it out with Trispina. If you find it in a sensible situation to play it, you just win that turn, so they're great. If I had more space in the side deck, I'd probably try and fit in more, but I don't know what I'd be able to cut to make that room. Uh, given that I am not main decking any hand traps, I sided gammas. Um, I don't much like Ash and Ogre. Uh, I'm only really looking to play hand traps against FTK decks. Anything else, I would rather have a handful of extenders and just try and push through everything that they can summon. So, if I'm only going to be playing a hand trap against FTK decks, I want to have the most impactful hand trap in the game, and I think that's Gamma. Uh, if I've opened with like one Ash or one Ogre, there's no guarantee that that's even going to be enough to stop an FTK deck, and a lot of the time they'll be playing things like uh, Called by the Grave as well, so it might not even resolve. But with Gamma, even if you're playing under um, Magical Midbreaker Field, it's still a negation, and 
it's the card that you are most likely to be able to rely on to shut down their turn, so it's the one that I wanted to include in my side deck. And then the other half of my side deck is the same as ever. Card Destruction, Triple Twister, Triple Reboot. Backrow decks can be a problem. This is the best answer for anything that's trying to play trap cards against you. This helps you find it. And this is a backup so you don't lose to floodgates. Uh, it's one of the few things that you can get really shut down by. Um, but yeah, that was the list that I played. Uh, I was really happy with it. I had a lot of fun over the weekend. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to play this for as long as I can. Uh, big shout out to the team, Team Caribros, all my friends that travelled up to the event with me. It was a great weekend. Uh, shout out to Card Market. Um, go there, get all your singles. And biggest shout out to my lovely girlfriend on the camera and travelling around to all these events with me. Couldn't do it without you. Bye, guys.